Hi, Big Life Bible. I'm Bella. This is Nathan, and we're from Laughing Around. So we're full-time travellers. We left in August of last year, so 2021. Uh, we took 12 months off to do a lap around Australia, and we're currently in WA. So um, yeah, we're just going to tell you a bit about our trip, what we do, uh, what we travel in, and some information about us. Um, I don't know. It's something we always wanted to do, I suppose. Um, and we're already doing a six-week trip to the Cape last in August with our six of our friends and the sort of things just fell into place with work and our house and we just thought might as well do it while we can with a chance so we yeah jumped into it. At the moment we're in WA, uh, southwest WA on the coastline in um, Yelling Up but uh, originally we started we went to we did our six week trip with our six couple friends as Nathan just said so we headed up to Cape Cape York in Queensland. Um, then they headed off home and we went into the Territory. So we spent about three months in the Territory uh, and then we actually did go home for Christmas. Mm. So I spent a month um, at home working. working. I up. couldn't really miss Christmas with our family. So <laughs> we um, went home for Christmas and then this year we set back off and um, went down to South Australia. So we're in South Australia for uh, two, nearly three two months, months yeah. um, and then WA from their borders, which is hopefully always the plan. So then we've come up to WA, um, and yeah, here we are. Oh, we just got a just our 2016 Hilux U um, canopy on the back, rooftop tent, 270 awning. It's pretty basic, but works for us. It's all we need. Gets us where we want to go. It's good. Generally, we stay, uh, we like to try to stay in free camp as much as we can. It definitely all depends on the situation and where we are. So, um, and how much we want to see as well. So like when we're around cities or for example, here in WA, so far we've found like next to no camps. Um, so we have had to stay in some caravan parks, um, especially recently, purely just because we don't then just want to bypass and miss really great spots so we then that's really the only reason we ever have to stay in a caravan park just so that we can explore the area um, if not we do free camps and that's probably our most favorite a lot of the free camps especially in south australia are amazing along the air peninsula um the york peninsula just so many amazing places off the beaten track you know even for us there wasn't that many people around you know i think wa has definitely been the busiest we've had so far um, but yeah, definitely free camps are our most favourite. Yeah. It's good to go to a caravan park too now and then for a proper shower. Yeah, That's not good. to say we don't shower. We have a shower awning, yeah. hot water that, <laughs> that we do have a shower with. But you know that you don't have to set up a shower. You can just walk in, wash your hair, take as long as you like. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. What? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, we'll give you a couple. Well, one from each state, I suppose, we've been to that we really like. We like that. In Queensland, Stanage Bay, which was really nice. And all the camps along the old Telegraph track up in the Cape were next level. And then the Territory, probably Dundee Beach, that was pretty smoky, right on the beach. We swung in our hammocks. Free camp, that was good. Right, right along the water. Yeah, um, South Australia, it was probably Moonlight Bay on the Air Peninsula. That was really good. Also, heaps heaps any... of squid, um, good swimming, snorkeling yeah. was really yeah. good. But yeah, most of the camps along the York in the air were. Yeah, I'm saying a lot of the good. York was awesome. But yeah, we haven't really we haven't seen a lot in WA yet, but um, so yeah, we don't really have a favourite here yet, but yeah, we'll get one soon when we head north. Yeah, I okay. hopefully. The best places we've ever been. So without a doubt, hands down, don't even need to think about it, is definitely Litchfield National Park in the Territory. Uh, we spent a week there and it was just waterfall after waterfall. You could camp real close to them, you know, 50 meter, uh, 500 meter walk or something like that. It wasn't far to walk. We could hang out there all day. It was so hot in the Territory. It was getting really close to the end of the year. Um, wet season was coming, so it was stinking hot. Um, but also because we met some people actually from the Sunshine Coast. So we're from Queensland on the Sunshine Coast. Um, and yeah, we actually, we were in the middle of nowhere and we ran into another couple that's friends with all of our friends. So it was really awesome. Um, 
and we spent a whole week with them. So we yeah. met back up when we were in Darwin and we headed down to Lichfield. And it was just, yeah, one of those places, you see so many places that you just wish you could bring your friends to or experience with your friends and family. And it was so good to experience Lichfield with friends. Yeah. Climb waterfalls, bushwalk through things, just love, yeah, just spending time with other people. And so for us, that was just an absolute highlight. It's just so different when you're with other people. Um, but yeah, really amazing. Absolutely. And we tell everyone all the time, make sure you go to Litchfield yeah. as long as you've got no pets. <laughs> or get a pet sitter. Uh... The Kimberleys, pretty much. Um, yeah, always wanted to go to the Kimberleys. Fishing, more waterfalls. It just looks sick, really. Yeah, I think yeah. anywhere on the West Coast, they always say, like, West is best, and you just see so much of the West Coast, especially, say, Perth up. Um, and just to see those places, actually see it, you know, come to life in your yeah. own eyes, not just Instagram, Facebook, yeah. books, things like that. Just see it for yourself. We're just super excited to see all those colors, the red and red dirt yeah. meets the blue water. It's gonna be really good. Um, so we don't travel with any pets. No, we don't have a pet. We don't, we don't have a pet at all, not even at home. Um, even at home, we just do too much on the weekends. We like to go away too much. It's a lot of people do. We've met some amazing people with friend with dogs, uh, yeah, dogs on the trip. Um, but for us, it just isn't something. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get a dog one day. Yeah, yeah. Just not at the moment. Yeah, so and now yeah. and it doesn't restrict us. We have no restrictions. We've got a full drive. Literally nothing will restrict us, which is really good. Um, a scary story. So we actually haven't had many scary stories. I think one scary story and a few like just thing after thing after thing shit moments that was just totally laughable at the end but i think first of all like our scary story was um we were in territory and we'd say just side just outside of kakadu national park so we we're crossing over to kakadu the next day and you've got to actually have a pass for a certain date so we couldn't get in any earlier um there was a free camp so we pulled up off like well off the road um, secluded little dirt road and it was probably one of our first ones where there was no one around and we had no phone service mm. so I mean normally that doesn't worry us but it was probably I don't know late at night we were watching a movie in bed and all of a sudden we heard like this really loud noise so we've turned it off and there's like a truck tow truck truck we didn't really know what it was at the time and it's pulled up right in front of the car like you know you'd have to it's even the truck that we were camping on we were well off the track in this you know just well off so no one could easily find us anyway this tow truck's come right in front of the car and i we both just we were just stunned we were just like what's going on it sat there just idling for a while no one said anything no one got out um and then it took off and then i was a bit over the top and i said to nathan um do you want to hear my scenario so instantly I'm thinking of all these terrible scenarios. He's like, oh yeah, righto. <laughs> so then I'm like, oh, they've stopped. Someone's gotten out further down. They're gonna come back in, in 15, half an hour's time. And meanwhile, someone's killed us and um, they're gonna come and steal our car and just no one's ever gonna know because there's no phone service. So we can't <laughs> SOS, someone help us. And no, 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 Nathan's just like, nah, don't worry about it, it's all good. So then we've gone back and we've like calmed down, hard to stop racing and we've gone back to watching our movie. And no kid, like 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes later, the tow truck is back and my heart has leapt out of my throat. Yeah, I it didn't really come back. It sort of. You could just hear it. It was it close. Coming, and you because could hear it and it sounded the same. It was coming back, but it pulled it was, up. It was like, coming back. Yeah. yeah. And so you could just, and you could, because it was, nothing was around. It was a quiet road. So you could hear when something was coming and it pulled up, not in front of us, but just, yeah, like Nathan said, just you know a bit further down the road and i and you could hear the chains coming out of the tow truck <laughs> and we have both of us not even just me both of us have freaked out so anyway we yeah we worked out it was probably looking for another car that was broken down. yeah and then what if, dragging it on yeah and then the talking up the road yeah. but you know like you're in the middle of nowhere we hadn't really camped alone with no service yeah it was just it was freaky and then we haven't had any scary no other that's scary encounter, encounters and only with that's actually only scary because I made it scary all these hectic thoughts yeah. go through my mind if it we wasn't heaps of times on our own since it's been yeah if it wasn't for that then 
then, then there's no other scary story nothing bad's happened to us which is good fingers crossed uh, oh, i reckon a coffee espresso mini espresso maker that we bought in where did we buy that? Darwin. Darwin. Yeah. And the jet boil. And the jet boil. It's yeah, we love our coffee, our iced coffees. So and we made a pact, especially like this second half of the trip, not to um try not to buy as much takeaway coffee. Which is yeah, we're a sucker a for an iced dollars. latte. So yeah, we use it pretty much every day to make a decent coffee. Yeah. We just find them, we get coffee from somewhere that we like in the local area. Get some coffee yeah, grounds. Yeah, so and, we, and then that's still supporting yeah. the local area. We're, we find yeah. we just buy some local yeah. coffee grounds and but then it's good. You can pull up anywhere, make a cup on the side of a hot tea or yeah, quick out, coffee. It's yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it saves us a fair bit of dollars. Yeah. In the end, but and it's tasty. Yeah. So good. Yeah, very good. <laughs> um Okay, so in all honesty, we only really decided we were going to do the whole lap probably three months, three months before we left. So we'd already planned to do six weeks with our friends um, and we'd had our setup yeah. the exact same. Service yeah, but like our setup was already set up a year or more beforehand because we do lots of trips when we're home. So there was nothing more we had to do. You know, we bought four new tires or something before we left and there wasn't big expenses before we left to do anything for the setup. Um, so really, yeah, we was literally, it was just one afternoon at home. There was a few things stopping us, our house being rented out and things like that. Um, and a few things fell into place and then we decided to go. So one afternoon we're like, okay, we'll go to work tomorrow and give our notice. Called our parents, told our parents, but apart from that, it's literally, we've just saved. And unintentional savings, we we've just, always had saved. we've always just saved. Um, and not even for anything and obviously this was our one thing we saved for in the end um so savings was a big thing uh and then uh we timed it actually originally for our six week trip and then obviously continued it was nathan got his long service leave so that's he was due at the end of july so from the first of august we could take that so that's when we left um so it was good we literally paid out nathan's long service and then i had a lot of holiday leave so i got that paid at half time each week and um yeah, I think we were paid through till end of October, start of November, which was really good. I mean, that's literally like having a job that we didn't work yeah, for two months. So I don't know what where we'd be if we didn't have that. That's yeah. a big thing. That's a really, really big thing. Um, and then we went home at Christmas, so we worked for three months. Yeah, yeah, three or three three weeks or so. Um, mainly seeing family but yeah work so it chopped up a little bit but in the end i think it almost just broke even for what we spent when we were home visiting everybody uh and then we have yeah come back out and we've actually pulled up so we're in yelling up at the moment at the caravan park where we're staying but we're also working here so we've got three more shifts left actually and our main reason we actually pulled up was school holidays here and everything already is so booked out it's so busy so we thought if i if we can find somewhere um and they've someone's got work we'll work so i put a post up on the local <coughs> community board and um yeah first thing tian from here messaged me and we were literally here in two days yeah we've been here for like four weeks now yeah so basically just for the month of april we pulled up did some work and then we'll be on our way so we won't have to work now for the rest of the trip until we get home so yeah being home at by august of this year so really we've only got like three months left i think um which is everything's gone so quick but yeah saved timed it really well with long service leave and holiday pay um yeah but also yeah working for a little bit here but just being money money smart i think like you know us having a you know fifty dollar coffee machine that we have we're not buying our slides every day you know between 10 15 16 dollars that we're not spending every time we stop somewhere is a really big help like god that literally would add up so much if we did just continue to spend so that's been a really and we have we've stuck to it we haven't really bought coffee out maybe a couple of times i think we've been out for breakfast and then we've had a coffee then but that's yeah literally it but yeah as long as you're smart with your money but yeah we spend stuff when we want to spend stuff but we just don't spend really nearly yeah yeah, definitely. Uh, it's hard to say. We at the moment we like we keep in track of everything. Bella's got a diary with every 
think that we spend diesel and fuel and accommodation and food and all sorts of stuff but so we'll work all that out once we get home but I don't know rough guess like six seven hundred bucks some weeks some less some more just depends how much traveling we're doing same with the biggest expense like definitely diesel um, on the big weeks where we're traveling a lot it's the biggest expense by yeah. far and then some of the weeks it could be food we just yeah it varies but mostly most of the time it's diesel i'd say it's the biggest expense it's definitely always diesel and yeah and that's what will push or drop our weekly expenditures is just how much we travel um okay we kind of on a couple of things so and everyone's splurges are something different so one of our splurges is we're in darwin as I said before, we met up with some friends and they had hammocks. So we were at the Litchfield and all week we'd set up somewhere at a waterfall and they're swinging in their hammocks and we were just so jealous. We're sitting on our towels on a rock or in the water or something. So we got back to Darwin. Oh, and they had a coffee machine. That's what really, and then, so it's literally, we got back to Darwin after being in Litchfield, went to the local camping shop, two hammocks and a coffee machine later. <laughs> so that's what we bought. I mean, that would have probably been hundred not it, probably like $150 yeah. and for us that's a splurge because you know we don't spend a lot of money on things you know we had everything so yeah. for us that was like oh okay yeah we'll do it and we've used god i think we use the coffee machine nearly every day and our hand makes as much as we can um apart from that the only other splurge again was in darwin nathan really wanted to go to the casino um because he thought he heard you can wear thongs in the mindle beach casino even though you didn't even wear your thongs no we ended up because we went out yeah, so then we decided to have a night out in Darwin with our friends that we met <clears throat> and went to the casino. But yeah, drinks out the yeah, drinks good. out the pub and yeah, we don't normally do that or we do, but not on a big scale like we did that night. So yeah, that was a big splurge, but it was a good night. So yeah. Um so we bought our Weber barbecue along on the first leg of the trip, but Due to room, we had to put it on the roof, so we never really dragged it off. I think we dragged it off once to cook a birthday cake for Bella, and once to cook a roast, and that's the only time we used it. So when we went home at Christmas, we ditched it, left it at home. We just use our fry pan and stove really to cook on, which we didn't think would be the case because at home we use our Weber all the time. We use it nearly every night. Anytime we had something barbecued, we'd use it every night, so it wasn't no brainer that we were going to bring it. Yeah. But I think it just being up on the roof, it was just that. If our setup was different, and it was. Maybe I'm a yeah, caravan it'd, and slide yeah, out. Yeah, it'd be used all the time. <laughs> and probably our um, flexible fry pit, it's like, we haven't even used it yet. We've used the top of it once, cooked some oysters. But yeah, everywhere we've been, there's either been fire pits or you can't have fires or you just have a fire on the ground. It's and, But it's something we'll keep in there because it, don't, it doesn't take up any room and it's good, it'll be handy one day. So. And it was one of those things that so many people said to us, you have to have a fire pit. You can't travel if you don't have a fire pit. Um, you can't get into places if you don't have a fire pit. And so far, that is not the case. So we've even heard, met other people on the road, along the road that have done the same thing, have bought a fire pit before they left. Mm. And same thing, we're all in the same boat. We haven't used it. There's been total fire bans. Our whole trip since leaving in January this year to now, we've had one fire. Mm just as we got into WA because we could. But still, all of these coastal towns, everywhere's in a really bad fire ban, so. Yeah, it ends in now, I think, May, it's like May, so we should be right to have some food for us. Yeah, and it is cold, so yeah. it would be good to have a fire. So, affected by lockdown and or COVID, we haven't been. So, at the very start of our trip, when we were heading north with our friends, um, we, we're a couple days out of Cairns and Cairns went into a, a snap three day lockdown. So basically we just went up on the tablelands and avoided the area. Um, that's the only lockdown that, and we weren't even caught in it, which nah, is good. Just we just had to avoid it, which sucked. We'd lo we love Cairns, we've been to Cairns heaps of times. It would have been good to go with our friends, but I mean, I'd rather not go than be stuck. Uh, and the only other thing really, I think we're just waiting for the WA border to open. So. We were in South Australia and we'd been there for nearly two months and we were kind of like, oh, is it, you know, is it going to open the borders? Um, we hadn't gotten to the stage where um, we we're going to go somewhere else. We were like, oh, we we'll probably, like, we'll probably should start talking about it. But then we just never did. And then it opened, yeah, so that was good. Yeah, it was good and it sucked for some of our friends that already 
made that decision to then go up through the centre by the time they got up there and came back down it would be open but we just yeah we don't plan a lot of things which is not like us at home but we don't plan a lot of things here we just go with what you know with how we feel if you like the place we'll spend longer if we don't we'll keep moving um so yeah we're just gonna see but then yeah it opened up um we're in Victor Harbour now, the guy we were staying at told us. So yeah, it was really awesome. It was like all on from there. It was like super excited to kick start the rest or finish the rest of South Australia so we could get over to WA. Um, but yeah, mm. thankfully no lockdowns. We haven't been stuck anywhere, so that's been good. And we haven't had to quarantine and yeah. things like that, which would be really difficult. And it's hard. A lot of friends have said it's hard when they were coming into WA to quarantine, um, especially if you're in a setup like ours, because you, yeah, you can't. And a lot of places won't take you, so we're just glad we haven't had to to do, to get into WA, we had to do that or anything like that, which we didn't, so that was really good. Uh, this tip would be, I don't know, it's, if you're thinking about doing a, a lap or a big trip or something, you, I don't know, just do it. We sort of always wanted to do it. And, I don't know, just, not to say scared, but you just don't, take that leap to leave your yeah. job and... that was the biggest leap for us yeah. but... is leaving our full-time jobs and our house that we own putting that on the market for someone to rent that was they were just two really big things with being so secure yeah. in and everything at out. home so yeah we just everything worked out and we jumped into it and it's been so good so if you're thinking about it and you're um and iron and you've got the chance to do it just do it it's so good best thing we've ever done i reckon yeah. it's yeah so sick yeah and i think another tip from like from me would be I don't know just it doesn't have to be a lavish setup you no. know we'll show you our setup soon Nathan made literally except for the frame of the canopy Nathan made everything that's inside um, it has worked for that so like literally a couple of years we've had this set up and then tested time and time again and literally living out of it full like full time now for nine months has just been it's been perfect we had there's nothing's broken nothing's had to change um yeah, it's good, eh? yeah but just like and and the packing like um just pack what you need like in our old setup we used to have a camper van a camper trailer and i had heaps of everything i don't even drink wine but i had wine glasses in there i had like six plates like just so much stuff oh in case someone came over no one's going to come and if they come they're going to bring their own stuff so like we, like we'll show you but we've got drawers and it's just got Two couple of plate, two of everything. That's all you need. And then I think another big thing is clothes. We have four of those um, yeah, soft boxes that you know in the little four cube things you get from Kmart and things. We've got four of those each. But even then, we packed more clothes than we thought. I culled a heap of clothes, and even then, our friends like, oh, you haven't packed many. And then I was worried about it. But you just you wear the same things yeah, on you're not on repeat. The same stuff. You know, and especially. I mean, a lot of people will, but Nathan like buys a lot of singlets. Like he's got, oh, okay, we both, I've got an Uluru and Nathan's got a Cape York, but you buy souvenirs along the way. So, if you, you know, and you want to wear those. You want to show those off rather than your random shirt from home. So just pack, pack light. It's also going to help you weights for your car or your van, but just, yeah, pack light in the kitchen, in your clothes, in the stuff you bring. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, really. Cool. Well, thanks so much for having us. Um, it's a real honour. We've, yeah, it's been awesome. We've been playing all our questions for a couple of days now, and it's good. It's making us really reminisce on things, and it's crazy to think that we've been on the road for nine months now, yeah. and the places we've seen. Um, yeah. yeah cool. That's everything. Thanks so much, guys. Alrighty, so here's the big rig. This is the highlights that we have. So we've got some storage up the top. We keep some spare car parts in the Rhino box. Um, and our snorkeling gear. Uh, got a Jerry as well. And yeah, so this is our kitchen. Yeah, this is the kitchen. So obviously you've got stand-up fridge. We did have a um like a chest fridge, but changed our setup oh, probably six months before we left us. I know this just seems to work better. Friends of ours have run them and they reckon they're good. So, oh, this is, it's been like so good. Probably one of the best things we put in the car, really, I reckon. Um, and then, yeah, the kitchen, like, so I made this box myself. 
just out of plywood and it's not not nothing special but it does the job box it's got drawers for our all our cutlery and cups and pans and all that sort of stuff and just general bits and pieces and just yeah it, do, it, it does the job it works it's nothing flash but yeah it's good that bench this is probably a good thing that we've done too way like one of my mates he fab this up for us and then we put it on like you know it's, it's been so good like just to cook on it's an absolute game changer yeah. like before that this is like we this. cook on here everything we did everything on there and it was just like having all that extra space we now constantly cook here we've got a gas bottle underneath. mounted underneath um and we cook on here just so much so much yeah. space so, so good. there's the rooftop we have some latches at the back there for the ladder but when our awning wraps around we have latches on this side as well so we can actually get in from the side yeah. And then this side's a bit of a schmuzzle at the moment, but it's pretty much this storage this side. But I made this drawer myself as well. I've done everything here myself, pretty much. It's obviously a mess, but um, that's just got all sorts of stuff in there, random stuff. And this side's normally just got our chairs, table, wire, pit, chainsaw, jet spare, water, jerrys, fishing rods, all that sort of stuff. Just the stuff that we use a lot. And then, yeah, obviously you've got more tank underneath, 60 litres. This side is closed, so we've got two of these, so one of these, these are back-to-back, -back, so we've got four each, and that's pretty much enough, I reckon. Like, Bella's obviously got way more than me, but I've, yeah, I've got heaps of I'm really sorry, I had jumper in mine. So, yeah, it works good, it's simple as well, but yeah, there's not much to it, really. It's, um, we just pulled, obviously we pulled our back seats out for the trip, but um, so yeah, that's worked out good. And shower awning, we don't use this a lot really, hey, like a bit, like most of the time, if we even, if, if we just buy ourselves out in the bush with a shower. But, yeah, we set it up for the comfort of other busy. people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but yeah, it works good. And, and our toilet on the roof? Yeah, toilet on the roof that we, we use a little bit, not much, but it's, it's good to have the be fully self-contained and stuff where you don't have toilets. We've got a couple of spare water jerrys as well that we carry them. In the end, we almost we never have to use that to chop up. Yeah, there's always water. There's always water, and we mainly just use the jerrys for um, our shower. Um, but yeah, so this is the setup. setup. We've got our max tracks. We use our max tracks once on the trip, but obviously if we didn't have them, then there would be dramas and we would probably need them. We don't have a winch, so Max Trucks, it was definitely the cheaper alternative for us. But um, yeah, believe it or not, our rooftop, so it's a mow top and it was pitch black. So it was black with um, orange trim and now it is like a light gray. That's so still good. it's still good. You can zip up all the windows and it will literally be pitch black on the inside. So you won't, it's hard to know day, night, except for the birds. But um, yeah, we have our table out at the moment, which we don't normally do. I mean, we're set up here for a month um, while, while we've been working. And even at home, we eat on the couch. So yeah. Um, yeah, but we have the table out just for something new. But yeah, another awesome thing that we love is I've got all these stickers on the car. So I got a little sprocket, but also, this so this is the trucks our trip so i started off here at home on the coast and we went up to cape york with our friends back down across to the territory and then all up through darwin so um you can see we just nipped into kananara up here um to see my some of my cousins um but yeah then back down the center into uluru South Australia, so this is where we then kind of cut across to come home. Uh, and then you can see like on the bottom right hand side, we've kind of come back. So we wanted to kind of go back through South Australia to see my cousins up near the Queensland border, but there's lots of flooding. So we ended up coming down through New South Wales, across into Victoria and into South Australia. So this is what we've been then doing our last, um, since January. So our last four or five months. So 
basically the bottom end of South Australia all the way across, literally all up and down the coastline across the Nullarbor into WA, which is where we are now. So this has been a really awesome thing to have. Um, everyone always comments on it. And it's one of those things that um, they say we can re-stick it when we get home. So you can stick it onto something else. So that would be awesome to track our trip. Mm. But that is, um, that's everything. That's our setup. That's our life. That's our home. Everything. Nothing takes a golf club everywhere. Just to, not even for protection. We don't have anything for protection, but just to get some golf balls. So yeah, thanks again, everybody. Bye. Hey guys, I don't know if you wanted to see the pantry. So if so, this is the pantry. So in the back there, we've got the core flute from the back of our clothes boxes. And in the top right hand corner, you've got Patrick, who is our uh, car mascot. But this is it. Just one of those, um, yeah, cube things again on its side, on its back. And that's what we do. We've got a couple of tubs underneath that we have um, camera gear and all sorts of I don't know things books and stuff this tub here is always emptied we emptied it at our first leg of the trip and then I have started filling it again just got things where we go things we collect um, shells rocks I do a diary um, we're well, not really a diary not a dear diary kind of person but just a recap of what we do in our day so that in there and yeah but that's just our simple pantry Nathan made we took our back seats out Nathan made this flooring um, yeah, it doesn't have to be lavish, expensive, just whatever works. It works fine for us. Um, yeah, thanks.